7.45, and then we move across to Zoom, where there's the opportunity for one-to-one -one prayer and fellowship, and we would love to invite you to join us on Zoom. We'll provide the Zoom details at 7.45. In the meantime, I'll hand over to my friend, Rachel. Thanks, Jackie, and hi, ladies. It's lovely to be here tonight, and as you know, when we go through the box online, we work through Pastor Sue's book, Faith to Live By, and I just want to remind you that you can pick up your very own copy of Faith to Live By on our DLR store. So you can visit destinyleadershipresources.com and you can pick your own copy up there. And the team will put that link in the chat for you if you're looking for that. And do you know what? I can't tell you enough how much this book, just together with the, the regular pattern of being in a box group as well, has brought strength it's brought structure and it's brought a real depth to my study in the word of God. And, you know, it's helped me to make the word workable in my life, as well as encouraging other ladies as well to do that. And the book comes with um, small studies and there's space for you to write your own notes in. And it also comes, you know, each study is anchored with a key verse. And, you know, for those that are wondering, how do I, you know, memorize scripture? Where do I even start? It's a great tool for finding verses, key verses to memorize and keep, you know, a bank of, of the word of God for you. So you can pick up your own copy on the DLR store. And as I've said, the book was written by our senior pastor, Sue Owen, uh, the Destiny Ministries founder. And I'm so delighted that Pastor Sue is with us here today. And I would just like to give you a very warm welcome, Pastor Sue. Thank you. That's lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sue, for just everything that you're pouring into us through these sessions. You know, we are so grateful and, you know, we're growing. So just want to say a huge, huge thank you. And we're looking forward to hearing from you today as well. And I'm so blessed to be in, in introducing you to our, our guest speaker for this evening, Fiona, Pastor Fiona Schubert. And Fiona is a lead pastor, assistant lead pastor in Destiny, Glasgow. And she's also a Dean of Destiny College. And she is married to Johannes, who looks after the media and the communications team in Glasgow. And together they have a beautiful baby little girl who I'm sure we might hear a bit more about her today. So Fiona, welcome to the Box Online. It's so good to have you. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. I hope we'll hear about her, but possibly not hear her. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Uh, we're looking forward to hearing your story, Fiona, so thank you so much. And I would also like to introduce Jackie and myself, and we are box hosts for this evening. And Jackie, together with her husband, Gordon, leads Destiny in Burness, and myself and my husband, Jill, we lead Destiny London. And, you know, we actually have a team as well of, you know, a small army of ladies behind the scenes who make these times together happen. And so I just want to say thank you so much, ladies, for everything that you're doing to help us bring these moments together. So thank you so, so much. And I'm going to hand over to Pastor Sue in a moment. But before I do that, I would just like for us to pray and just commit this time to God. So would you pray with me just now? Thank you. Father, I just want to thank you so, so much for this evening. Father, I just thank you for bringing us together. And God, I thank you that you have chosen to be with us tonight as we come together in your name and God I just pray your anointing upon Pastor Sue and Pastor Fiona as they come to share the word and the testimony and God I just pray that God your Holy Spirit would just illuminate everything you are sharing with us today so that we can receive from you so that we can walk together in faith and in unity and God I just pray your great grace upon this time I pray your grace upon the team. I pray your grace upon every single woman connecting now and even those who are to catch up. Father, just pray your grace upon us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Pastor Sue. Thank you, Rachel. Well, hi, everybody. It's so lovely to see you. And I just wonder if you're able to wave if you've built a snowman yet. We built a snowman enjoyed the fresh air, enjoyed the exercise, and uh, found the carrot, chopsticks for arms, and the little gardening gloves for hands. So we're enjoying this season, but I know 
for some it's quite cold and I pray that even this time tonight as we talk around the word and look into the Bible and have some fellowship together that maybe this will bring you some warmth to your heart tonight. We're actually on session 10, I can't believe it, but what I want to do in this first minute and a half, two minutes, is actually recap for you from uh, session four. And in, in session four, we discussed in Ephesians 6, verse 16, the armor of God. And we looked at the fact that the shield of faith, the shield of faith is door sized. So if you're intrigued and interested, you may want to look back at lesson four on the box on the Destiny Diamonds page. Session five, we found that we can claim the wit of God. We can claim the wit of God, the wisdom, the exceptional intelligence of God. Because in there, in Psalm 89 and verse 22, we read that we can become super smart and that none would outwit us. It's a brilliant promise from God if we're feeling confused or less than. Psalm 89, verse 22, none shall outwit him. We found in uh, John 10.10 10, that the enemy only ever comes, that means accompanies, John 10.10, 10, the enemy only ever comes or accompanies to destroy. But we go on in that scripture to find that Jesus said, I come, I accompany, accompany. I love that. He comes alongside to give life. And maybe some of you are listening tonight and thinking, well, I don't really partner with Jesus. I don't really walk with Jesus. I don't really know him yet. I'm praying that you will do by the end of tonight or by the end of this session. We found in the seventh uh, night when we met together, I don't know which month that was, but se session seven, that the word of God is sent with a harvest in mind. It's sent to produce, there's a purpose for it, and it's always carrying its own harvest. And uh, we found that in Isaiah 55, verse 11. That is teaching number seven in the book, Faith to Live By. On the eighth occasion that we met, we uh, read from James 4, 7. James chapter four, and verse seven. And just to recap, to be over your enemy, to be over your enemy, you need to come under the Lord. It's about submitting to God and then you can resist the enemy. Some of us rush and try to resist the enemy, but actually we've not taken stock. We've not checked our, our bearings. We've not um, doubled down underneath the covering, the authority, the guidance, the wisdom of God. And we still somehow seem to think we can res resist the enemy. But here we found to be over your enemy, you need to come under the Lord. So we submit and then we can resist. That, as I said, was James 4, verse 7. The ninth time we met together, we've um, discovered our confidence. It's one of my favorite verses in scripture or two verses in scripture. We find them in 1 John 5, 14 and 15. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. And I've often said over many months that there's a promise for every problem. And this scripture here in 1 John chapter 5 is specifically addressing our levels of confidence. And I don't know about you, but I think today's confusion I think the uncertainties, I think the changing um, kind of foundation constantly that the government or education or health or finance, uh, you know, experts bring to us constantly leaves us a bit battered when it comes to confidence and boldness and assur assurance. But the Bible says you can be full of confidence. And if you wanted to double check, 
back in our diamonds session there, out of the box session on the diamonds Facebook page about confidence. It's, it's the ninth one you need to have a look at. And tonight, folks, we are looking at the fact from Romans 10, verse 17. Romans 10, verse 17, that faith comes by hearing. I'm just going to read that scripture to us from the book here, because as Rachel kindly said, every time you've got, it's full of writing, is this? I mean, look. <laughs> really untidy. But I don't mind, because I want my heart to get strong. I don't want everything just to be polished and me feel really fragile. So I write things down. It helps me to remember. I write things down. It helps me to formulate phrases and answers. And uh, as we said earlier, as Rachel said earlier, the verse is always there, the concept is there, and there's usually a wee task or a challenge or a question. And um, in chapter 10 here of the book, I've written, here we acknowledge that the word of God has plenty to say to us, and it's extremely important in our faith walk. I've actually stated quite clearly, it is our only true source of faith. Therefore, we don't treat it lightly. We don't dilute it or ignore it. Our faith can only come from the word of God. It does not find its origin in the opinions of others. Now that, in some instances, it's quite a challenge because people are being very opinionated these days. But it does not find our faith does not find its origin in the opinions of others. It doesn't come from prophecy, which I've put in brackets. In brackets, it says, which is a bonus, being an exhorter, an encouragement, and a strengthener. Prophecy is good, but it doesn't bring you faith. It boosts your faith. It doesn't kind of become the foundation for your faith. It adds to it later. The word is what gives you your faith. And neither does faith come from past victories. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm just taking my time here because I've been asked to, to um, steady up a bit because some of our ladies tuning in are deaf and these messages are needing to be signed, which is really great. I'm so glad that we're um, having signing for anyone who needs that. And that's why I've steadied down my kind of pace because I think two months ago I was racing ahead, making it very frantic for the signer. So I want to really honour you ladies that are joining us who are appreciating the signing tonight. God bless you. But faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That word hearing means we're giving it audience. We're listening to the report and we're understanding the rumour. We're giving audience to uh, the word of God in this instance is the word Rima, R H E M A, and it's G4487. And that word Rima means the utterance, the spoken word, the command, and the utterance of God. There's a difference between the Logos and the Rima. The Logos is the overall kind of account in scripture from Genesis to the end. It's quite systematic. It's quite methodical. But the, your faith comes by something that God causes you to actually speak out loud. I want to talk about that in a few minutes. The fact that we, we are blessed when we, as I said earlier, find the promise that fits the problem. And then we speak it back out loud to God. Two or three different things happen right there. But we are looking at this faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The fact that we can hear many different voices. We said two minutes ago, there are opinions everywhere. Um, we can't shut some of those voices off. Some of them we must. 
but we can't shut them all off. And yet we kind of, uh, what's the word, formulate our faith by listening to what God says. Whose report will you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. And in the context of all the information that's just given to us through the newspapers, the radio reports, the daily briefings, we've discussed some of that even in recent months during the box sessions. We have to, we have to filter it through the word of God. If we only took on board what the newspapers were saying or what the government um, officials were bringing us, I think we would all be, be beyond. We would be past trying to, to move forward. We'd be past trying to make good choices. We'd, we would be lost and confused. And I'm so grateful that God has readied us with his word. He's readied us and uh, steadied us with his word. And we realized right from session one, if we don't build our faith, we leave a gaping chasm in our life. That was what we looked at in session one. The fact that it's not just that you'll get by, but you're leaving a gap that's too big to cross. So we, we are really grateful that God has furnished us with his word. I, I love the fact that he fills his word out for us. And there are so many verses that interlink and we can study, like we said, weeks ago from different translations and we can weave it together so that that picture of the future he sees for us that picture of encouragement that we we desperately need can become full uh, and it can become true and it is trustworthy we learn to trust that word i just want to take us on a little journey for a few minutes tonight because this faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God means that there's something God's done and then there's something we can do. We would do well to fellowship with, with the Lord through his word and um, realize that our relationship is deepening as we get into the word. We don't just have the word and no fellowship because it's just a cold letter Neither do we just have fellowship and don't get into the word because it's just not grounded in, in the truthfulness or the stability or the information, the, the love letter of God. We, we need to build our relationship with him by understanding who he is. And um, there's a beautiful verse here, if I can find it. Jeremiah 9, I think it is. Let's have a look. Probably... No, it's not Jeremiah 9. I'm going to just follow through carefully the way I've written my notes here. I'm running ahead of myself. Proverbs 3, verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. You know, I love that where it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. It could actually say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own head. Don't, don't use your own thinking, your thought patterns, your opinions, your uh, viewpoint, um, your past memories. You don't lean back into your head. You trust in the Lord with all your heart. You, you, you push your heart towards him. And uh, you find that he is faithful in that. You believe with your heart and you speak with your mouth. Something about when we said from Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of the Lord, the message of Christ, we, when we speak it back, we, we're speaking out from our heart uh, a bold confession. We speak, we, we're speaking out from our heart something that we've grasped, that we've become acquainted with. Um, let me just find this verse here for you too. Jeremiah 9, 23 says, let not the wise man um, bask in his wisdom, nor the mighty man in his might, nor the rich man in his riches. When we're fellowshipping with the Lord, we're getting closer to him. When we're spending time with him, we're getting to know who he is uh, and what he's like. This Jeremiah 9 is a fabulous scripture because it says, let him not bask or boast in his own wisdom. Let him not bask or boast in his might, 
or boast or bask in his riches. But in verse 24, it says, let him boast in this alone that they truly know me and they understand me and understand that I am the Lord of justice and of righteousness, whose love is steadfast and that I love to be this way. You, you, you can um, grow, not in just knowing about God, but actually knowing him. And one of the things I know we've looked at over weeks, uh, this whole concept of the Holy Spirit being a secret weapon. The Holy Spirit is going to bring to remembrance the things that God's talked to you about. He's going to encourage you to um, reclaim the things that God's promised. And the Holy Spirit wants you to not just know about God, but to get to know God. And I want to encourage you that you don't need to take forever to get to know God. And one of the things, this is where I'm going with this, one of the things that helps me formulate how I want to share with you uh, and, and bring things to you or nurture you is because the Holy Spirit highlights things. You know, when you look at Greek, uh, look at Strong's and you look in the Greek, you look at Strong's and you look in the Hebrew and you think, there's such a list of words there. Where do we go with this? I don't know if anybody's ever felt that when you've checked out the apps and you've thought, this is like everything under the sun and more. And you have to try and fathom, God, what are you saying? You know, God, where are we going? God, what am I supposed to really grasp in this or take home? I would say, just, just focus on and um, invest in and take time to get to know God by his spirit and he will highlight to you what he wants you to see in any given scripture you you will be able to, it's just like when you're married you know you you fellowship with your partner you don't just sign the marriage certificate and say i'm married now and bye <laughs> you fellowship with them how do you fellowship with them you spend time and you talk together and you listen and it's the same with the lord you don't just have um, a certificate saying you're born again as in the word of God you, you spend time talking reading waiting abiding some of the you know the old speak um, tarrying even older speak still you just hang on in there to get to know God and there's so many different ways you can do that Pray, praying in tongues you get to know God you, know, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit that's not a gift given just for the New Testament believers. We, I love the fact that the supernatural is very super. It's full, it's fresh, it's vibrant, it's absolutely fantastic, but actually it's very natural. It, we are born to be supernatural. It's very organic, it's, it's authentic, it's, it's, it's real, it's not scary. Why is it so many are going off into the supernatural, the palms being read and tea leaves being looked at and fortunes being told we girls have got the most supernatural experience that they are longing for that if only we get bolder to be able to share learn some new language some new words we can say we live a very supernatural life the holy spirit is our secret weapon you know i once needed to to prepare a message i've shared i've alluded to it in days gone by and i've resisted sharing the kind of the full picture because I was just a bit embarrassed but God said no go on share it with them and um, I remember being asked to to speak for an event and I thought do I need this or do I need that and the Lord uh, I asked the Lord you know is that enough or is that enough and um, I, he gave me a reference and it was in the Old Testament and do you know what it was about breastfeeding <laughs> I thought I need both. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit graphic, isn't it? But the way the way God said it to me, I thought He knows I will not have enough. Half my notes, and I just thought, Lord, you are comical. You are so naughty, God, talking to me like that. It's really, really funny that anybody in that season knows the blessing. Of, of your body and that you can feed and that you've 
been equipped to feed. Let me move on quick. I want us to know that we believe with our heart, but that we speak with our mouth. We build our faith because we've studied in the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. We build our faith around what God says to us. And when we're fellowshipping with us, he's always talking to us. There's always an answer for the challenge you're facing. You may be in a moment where you think, shall I go get the vaccine? You may be in a moment where you think, what will I do for work now? You may be in a moment when you think, can my marriage cope with any more of this isolation and this locking in, locked in? But, you know, Andrew and I celebrate our 40th anniversary this Valentine's Day. He jokes that he chose Valentine's Day so that he'd only need one card. I think that's a bit mean, really. I think that's a bit stingy. <laughs> but he, he, we've joked about it since. He's very generous, really. But, you know, we never forget, do we? We, never, we, we? we can't be accused ever of forgetting our anniversary. The dilemma used to come when we tried to arrange to go out for a meal and the places were mobbed, there was never any space. We don't have that problem this time. We just didn't. And we're just absolutely grateful and, and kind of, I think we're both in shock that we made it to 40. <laughs> we, we're like, did we really do that? You know, what, what we've been busy with all these years. And I'm just conscious of us being given the chance to celebrate uh, and just, the, the grace of God that's covered us through so many seasons. And you might be thinking, can I make four, never mind 40? You know, I would say to you, think up, invent, look for, um, manufacture ways to love one another, show, show that you love one another, do something that's fun or do something that's really deep and tender, and, but just manufacture new ways to love each other and quickly learn how to forgive. You know, I had to, to kind of become a bit more like Andrew and get the guy thing going on, which is they move on so fast, guys. They kind of um, get over it quick somehow. And they're a bit more, more matter of fact. And I thought, well, I can't do the broody woman thing in this house. It's not going to work. <laughs> I have to get, you know, I forgive quickly and move on and just know it's not the end of the world. We've said some stuff. We've maybe done some stuff. And yet at the same time, I'm thinking, but we've forgiven each other quick and we've moved on and we, we've decided we're staying together and um, we're only halfway there. You know, if people are living till they're 117, then actually we're only halfway there. <laughs> so we've, got, we've got a lot, a lot more life ahead of us, but you know, God, God is willing for us to get to know him. It says here in Jeremiah 29, uh, Jeremiah 9, 24, boast in the fact that you know me, Wow, bask in the fact that you know me, not just know of, but you know me. Uh, and I want to move on quickly. Sometimes you, you're struggling with your mind, but your heart is secure. I want to take us into 2 Corinthians 10 for, for a second. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 says, you cast down imaginations. If something's causing you to fear, it's not from God. Throw it down quick. If something, something's causing you to panic, it's not from God. Deal with it fast. Replace that lie with truth. Your God said he'd never leave you. Your God said he would always bless you, provide for you, protect you, stand up for you, defend you, bring something towards you that will lift you and encourage and increase you. God has got a good plan for your life. You need to smile more when I'm speaking. You know, God is... On your side, Joshua chapter 1, 1 to 9, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. I'm your God. I'll always lift you up, Isaiah 41. I'll hold you with my righteous right hand, I think it is. You know, there's so many promises uh, where God is absolutely confirming and laying down again and establishing his commitment towards you. How good is he? And 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5 says, you cast down imaginations, those things that it says, every high thing that exalts itself and that wants to come in between relationship is, is absolutely and only from the enemy. God only and ever wants to bring you closer. 
it goes on to say in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, bringing into captivity every thought, every thought to the obedience of Christ. I want to encourage you, 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 you get the promise and then you speak it back out. You pull down the lies. You get into the word to get your faith. You have to sometimes assess the information coming at you, but you filter it through the word of God. I want you to um, finish with me before we break bread just now. I've got two minutes, I think, from this scripture in Romans 10 and verse 8. It says, but what does it say? The word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we're preaching. The word is near you. It's not too difficult for you to understand. Get yourself an easy translation. Ask someone to help you. Pick a verse and ask someone to tell you what it means. Pick a verse, read it in 10 different versions of the Bible. You'll get to understand it. You'll get to know his heart. You'll get to understand what he's saying to you. It goes on in verse 9 here of chapter 10 in Romans. Romans 10 verse 9. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart. We're talking about heart faith. Sometimes our head gets in the way. That's why we have to pull down these thoughts all the time. But your heart is, is where your love flows from, isn't it? You love with your heart. Sometimes when your head is saying, I don't know what, you know, what's going on, your heart still knows that God loves you. Your heart still knows that he can't lie. Your heart still knows that his faithfulness is secured for you. It says here in verse 9, you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You'll be saved. Confess with your mouth, you believe with your heart. For with the heart, a person believes, resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth, he conf confesses, resulting in salvation. If you've been watching tonight or joining in and you don't know the Lord yet, and I want to pray with you as we break bread. We believers do this. We, we take the juice and we take the bread. The juice is an emblem. The wine is an emblem of the blood that Jesus spilt for you to bring you into relationship with God. And maybe you're feeling far away. The bread is an emblem. It's a symbol of the broken body, which is absolutely fantastic because it, he was broken so that we could be whole. He was broken so that we could be healed. He was broken so that our mind and our, our, all of our senses and our faculties could be in health. We could be secure and strong. Let's just break bread together. <clears throat> and I just want to pray with you if I may. And I know that the girls are on, on the Zoom live in a minute or two. If you want to discuss or pray personal things, that there's a, a good team ready and they're willing to pray with you. But I hope this teaching's helped you. Maybe it's answered a couple of questions. Hope it's brought you into a, a bigger, broader, stronger foundation of faith. Um, Apologies if I've raced, you ladies that are signing. I'm just going to pray right now. If you need to give your life to the Lord tonight, use these words with me. Father God, I thank you that you sent Jesus to shed his blood, for his body to be broken for me, that I might be brought into your family. I receive his love, I receive his brokenness to bring me life and wholeness. And I take this bread in Jesus' name. I confess my sin that I need you. I confess my independence, I want to be with you. Take me now, Lord Jesus, become my savior, become my Lord. Thank you when I hear uh, thank you when you hear me pray. In Jesus' name, Father God, you receive me. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, that's just wonderful. I know the girls who are on the team have done this many times and they're willing to pray with you. But we just celebrate that you've prayed that prayer. We want to send you a booklet. I don't have it with me right now, but 
we'd love to send you a booklet. Please just come on, write down your, your, um, your desire to connect. We don't want your address on public social media. Don't do that. But give it to the girls or, or reach in. Maybe you're watching this after the fact and you want to um, connect, then just reach in and send us a private message. We'll be back to you. Right now, it's a joy to introduce Fiona Schubert, who's coming to share her testimony, her story. She's a really, really lovely friend, a lovely woman of God. She's written a book about identity. You might want to take a look at that sometime. And um, thank you, Fiona, for coming to share your story. I'm so grateful that you would uh, just take this time to be with us tonight. God bless. And I'll see you soon. Bless you too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sue. That was wonderful and so, so good, isn't it? Just to hear from the truth of God's word, to hear what he says about us, to hear how he teaches us and trains us so that we can be strong and doing well and full of health and feeling peaceful. And that really is my story. That's what I want to share with you is how he's spoken into my life and allowed me to go through um, some of the most difficult and life-changing um, things that have happened over the last, even just the last year. Um, but allowed me to go through it with, even in difficult moments, this underlying deep sense that God is with me and the words that he's spoken to me are remaining in my life with his peace and with his power. And it's been a great, a great year. I can testify and say that although it's been challenging, although there's been lots that's happened this last year, for me, it's been a great one because God has been with me. The other thing that, as Rachel mentioned um, at the start, that I can say has been great about the last year for me is that I became a mum um, and my little girl, Elise, was born on the 23rd of March last year. So for anyone that is not aware of that, um, that date was a special date uh, for this country and not in a good way, really, because that was the day that the UK went into official lockdown. Now, I went into hospital that day to be induced. Um, and so I knew that uh, one way or another, I was going to have a baby either that day or in the days to come. But I didn't realise that I would be, um, you know, there after Lisa had been born, holding her in my arms and hearing the news that, you know, we weren't going to be able to have any family or friends see her. Um, we weren't going to be able to go and visit people. Um, the, we were being told we had to stay home. And so it also affected things for me in the hospital because um, I wasn't allowed to have um, Johannes there with me the day after. I had to stay in hospital um, for um, a few days and the day after he wasn't allowed to visit me at all. So, or us at all. So Elise and I were there on our own. Um, and I just remember, you know, in, in many moments, um, so that, you know, I, I had that experience in the hospital, but even when I got home, I just remember in many moments sitting and thinking, I'm so, so glad that I have God that I know him, that I am able to get to know him better through this time, because it makes me, it, it makes me so grateful. And I realize that not every person, and maybe even, you know, there's some of, some of you ladies here tonight, you, you actually don't know that you could say that with confidence, you know, God is with me and I know him, but that's, that's the thing that has changed everything for me in my life. It's the thing that has changed um, the way that I see the world, the way that I see challenges. And I want to be really honest with you tonight. That I'm not saying that things become easy. You know, it's not like life just cruises along and then everything is great all of the time. But there is this undercurrent. And I think a lot of what Sue's shared tonight has been about that, you know, the foundation that the word of God, the Bible, the promises that he gives to us puts in place so that when everything else is crashing all around us, we know that even when we feel it in our emotions, underneath that, we know we have the peace of God that he's given. And he's not taking it away. You know, Jesus said, my peace, I give to you my peace. I leave with you. It's, it's yours, you know, take it. And so that's really helped me a lot is to remember that. Um, but it was very different than what I planned. You know, as I, as I mentioned, I knew I was going to have a baby. I knew she was going to be born, but I didn't know it was going to come out into this world looking so, so different. And 
it very much was, you know, me, Johannes, that's my husband, um, and Elise, you know, for, for months, she didn't meet any family members until she was over three months old. Um, it was a very, very strange um, time for us all, but God spoke to me so much. He shared so many things with me. Um, and it was really interesting that Sue mentioned that verse um, about breastfeeding because I wanted to I wanted to actually share with you a verse from Psalm 131. And I don't know if it's the same verse, <laughs> but it says, surely I have quieted my soul like a weaned child with his mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. It ceased from fretting. It has ceased from fretting. And that's the word that I've been continuously um, reminded of. You know, when I look back at it, I think that is that is what I had to do. I had to keep on quieting down my mind, quieting my soul, quieting my heart within me because everything around me wanted to say, you know, they didn't know what was going on with the virus when I had Elise, you know, when I was in the hospital. That's why everyone was so nervous. And, you know, we don't, we don't know, you need to be careful. And the, the nurses told me, you know, they said to me, I wouldn't even be going out, you know, not, not for walks or anything with a baby. And we don't know what's happening. So, of course, to me, I was thinking, hmm, well, maybe I shouldn't be going out then. But as I allowed God to, to speak to me, I realized, no, I need to do the things that are going to help me. You know, we follow the guidance, we follow the rules, we, you know, we trust what we're being told to do to the extent that we feel is, you know, is what we're able to do for ourselves. But actually, it's God that we're trusting in. It's not, it's not other things. It's not, um, it's not doing the right thing that we're trusting. In. And that was a big thing for me. I had to realize that and I had to, you know, trust, trust in God. And, you know, I, I was thinking about the, the verse that, that Sue shared tonight as the kind of main verse for tonight, that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And I realized, you know, fear also comes by hearing but hearing something different. <laughs> so the question is, what are we listening to? And like Pastor Sue shared, what are we giving audience to in our minds and around our lives? And for me, you know, uh, just a quick example, um, it, again, related to Elise, but because she hadn't seen people in person, you should, the most she'd seen was people on a, on a phone screen. Um, but because of that, so many people, you won't believe the number of people said to me, oh, she'll be so funny with people. You know, she'll be so strange with them. She won't want to interact with them. And I just I just said, no, she won't be. <laughs> and I just I just stuck to that. No matter who said it was, I just kept thinking, no, no, she won't be. And sure enough, if you meet her, she is the first one to be like smiling at you, wants to interact. She started walking over the last couple of weeks. And now she talks toddles around between the rooms in the house and it's just wonderful to see how animated and excited and sociable she is as a as a little girl that has been essentially born in lockdown and lived through lockdown for her whole life um yeah so that's that's what I would say I mean I as as Rachel mentioned you know I've I've got some different roles and one of the things that I'm involved with um, when I'm not on maternity leave is Destiny College and that's actually where I learned the love of the, the word of God, the Bible, because I hadn't ever realized the power of the Bible and of the power of what God has said until I went to Destiny College. So anyone who's not had an opportunity to connect with the college, I really encourage you. And I would say that regardless of whether I work there or not, because I've been and I've studied at the college and it's really changed my life. So I 100 percent encourage you with that. Um, and it's just been great to see the way things have grown this year, the way lives have been changed. I've realized that what we are going through is not forever. And people keep saying that to me. You know, they keep saying like, well, you know, one day we'll get past this. But it's not just a case of let's grin and bear it. It's, it's deciding to make the most of what's happening right now. Make the most of the time that we're in. Because I said to Yannis the other day, you know, one day we'll look back and go, remember, it was so nice when... You know, we got to spend all that quality time together and we couldn't do all these other things, but we were just focused on on the three of us. So I'm trying to adjust my perspective in line with what God has spoken to me, in line with what he continues to reveal in my heart. Um, and that's why I, I felt I could really share this encouragement tonight, not because all of the time I'm feeling great, because like you, I have moments where I think, 
<laughs> but I also have moments where I'm able to lift my hands and they are a lot more where I lift my hands and say thank you God because you brought me through so much and I I really want to encourage you with that tonight so I hope that what I've shared is um yeah it is an encouragement to you and just remember what are you listening to what are you hearing because what what is happening in your life either the faith that's being produced or the fear the doubt or the worry it's coming from what are you listening to what's going in so let god's word go in and dig down deep into him i think i'll hand back over to jackie is it jackie thank you fiona thank you <laughs> a huge huge thanks pastor sue and fiona that was absolutely wonderful thank you very much now, ladies, we are moving across to Zoom for a time of one-to-one -one fellowship and prayer. So we would love to invite you to come and join us. Now, I'm going to read out the Zoom code for you. The ladies will also put this into the Facebook chat. The Zoom code is 871-634-96256. That's 871-634-96256. 256. Our next box is on Friday the 12th of March and it can't come quick enough. We would love to welcome you then. God bless you and bye-bye for now.